So you work in manufacturing and your boss told you you need to take a GD&T course. And they started talking about position tolerance and true position and virtual condition and basic dimensions and maybe a lot of that's not making sense. So after work, we go to the bar and decide we're going to play some darts. We're kind of thinking about this stuff and looking at this dart board and going, man, that's a lot of numbers. I, don't, I got off work. I don't want to do a bunch of math. Let's make this simple. I know when I, when I was a kid and I first started throwing darts at a dart board, I didn't care about points. I just wanted to know if I could hit the middle. And if I can hit the middle consistently, I, I can do anything I want with this dart board. So let's simplify this thing and just go to a dart board that only has a bullseye. And there's no points for hitting anything but the bullseye. If you get a bullseye, you get all your points. If you miss it, you get nothing. And of course, we all know that the center of the bullseye would be right here, but do we have to hit that? No. You could hit the bullseye anywhere you want, and it's still a bullseye. It doesn't have to. I mean, you want to be right in the middle. You're aiming right for the middle, but you could be clear out here. So let's say we play darts. We're, th we're throwing at it. We're trying to hit the bullseye, and after, you know, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, we end up with something like this. So a lot of our hits are in the bullseye. But a few of them, further out, are not. And they don't count, because they're not in here. But to be able to go further, I need to use a different dart. This thing's too skinny to make my point. I need something that's a little bit bigger around. Now, this is a serious dart. So let's say we're throwing this thing at this dart board, and we're getting bullseyes. In fact, let's start fresh. Well, we'll go with that one. Let's start fresh, and let's say I hit way over here on the edge. That's still a bullseye, right? The, the tip of the dart is just inside that edge. So I still get my points. It's still a good hit. And we're going to look where the shadow of the dart, if I take this tip out of there and just set it down on that spot, we can see that the dart casts a shadow on the board. And what that would look like, if we hit right there on that edge, this is what the shadow of that dart is going to look like, right? Does that make sense? I hit that spot, stick it right there, and we basically won't be able to see that part of the board until we take the dart out. Now let's say we throw the dart again, and we get, this time, all the way on this edge of the bullseye. Still a good hit. We still get the points. And it looks like that. All right. So we've hit here and we've hit there, and the dart casts a shadow on the board. The first time, it's this circle. The second time, it's this circle. Now let's do a third hit. Let's go for, and let's say it lands all the way at the top, just as high as it possibly can, and still make a bullseye. Of course, we get another circle where the shadow of the dart would land for that. And of course you can see where I'm going. I'm going to go, if we hit all the way at the bottom, it's going to look like this. So basically what we've got is all the locations that that dart could land around the edges. And of course if I went in and filled in here and there, and there, and there, we'd start to sort of form this circle on the outside that we know the darts are never going to land in. 
right? So we sort of get this, this zone there that we know the darts are never going to exceed. Now why do we care? Why are, why are we throwing darts and we're trying to talk about GD&T? Well, if we have an assembly, and this, let's say this is something that I went down to the furniture store or Ikea wherever, where it's, it's take home and assemble your own furniture. And this thing is held together with a couple of pegs and a couple of holes. But I know if I'm uh, trying to put this thing together, it's not just that the uh, peg goes into the hole. When I've got two of these things, they have to be the right size and they have to be in the right place for it to go together. Now, if I'm going to make something like this, if I'm the, the manufacturer that I'm going to build stuff like this, I've got to start with raw materials and I've got to be able to place my holes. So if this was the one that had the uh, that I'm going to drill and put pegs in there, we could think of this little red spot as the target for my drill. Just like when I have my dart and I'm I've just got to get somewhere in this circle. We know, even though I'm aiming for this exact center, just I'm not perfect at darts. The darts are going to land somewhere off of that center, but as long as they're in this circle, in this bullseye, it's still good. And it's the same thing when I go drill holes in a block of wood, I can't put all of the holes perfectly on center with my target. Sometimes I'm going to be a little this way, a little that way, a little this way, a little that way for both holes. When I go in there and line up with this drill bit, sometimes it's going to, I might even be in dead center, but as soon as I start to spin it, the drill might walk one way or the other before it really cuts in and makes that hole. So anytime I'm manufacturing something, there's variation in where I put that feature. Just like with throwing a dart. What this red circle means is my commitment as the builder of where I think I can put that hole repeatedly. If I'm going to make a thousand of these shelf pieces ready for assembly, I've got to make sure that they can all fit together. So I figure out what I can commit to. How small of a target or a bullseye can I commit that the center of my hole will be able to match up to? And then I can look at if this was my drill that when I'm off to the edge it's going to be so sometimes that hole is going to end up here it's going to end up here it might end up here and it might be down there but as long as I commit to every hole that I drill the center of it being within that circle or within this circle and I have a drill bit of a certain size then I can predict that it's never going to exceed a certain amount and that becomes important because I'm drilling that hole so that I can put a peg in there and this is like having the peg in all these different spots and I need to know when that peg is over here and when it's over there and it's up here and down there what circle will it not go outside of. It will always stay inside of that circle so that I can design the holes around it so that when I line it up Again, if I make a hundred or I make a thousand of these things, they will always go together. Now, this is for the peg. What about the hole? Can I just make the hole the size of this green circle? 
If I did, it'd have to be dead center. Notice that this green circle is right on center. If I know that I can't put my pegs in exactly the same spot every time, that probably means I can't put these holes in exactly the same spot every time. So I need to make these holes bigger so that they've got a little bit of room to move. So let's say that this is the hole size that these pegs are going to fit in. And let's say that I've got the same amount of certainty. So this was my certainty on, on what I thought I could do drilling holes for the pegs. Let's say I've got the same, about the same certainty on drilling holes that they'll slip into in the mating part. So if we stick with that same amount of certainty, and this is our hole size, and we line it up this way, where it's going to be I end up over here and the hole looks like that and I end up over here in this one and it lines up like that so that's how much shift I have in this hole if I use the same amount of, of deviation now you might notice if we just go to our peg so we said that this was this green circle was the circle that would always fit over the pegs no matter where they were but if we look at one of those pegs, and we put our, uh, our bullseye right next to it, it adds up. So if you want to know, this is the size of the feature, like the peg, and this is the size of the bullseye, all I have to do is add the two together and it will tell me how big I need to account for on my mating part. Does that make sense? So I can take the feature size plus my bullseye and I get that circle that I have to accommodate in my mating part. And the same with this one, if I want to know how big of a circle I have to line up. If I use the same bullseye size, it doesn't really matter if it's the same. I'm using it as the same. It could be any size you want to. You put that bullseye there, and guess what? It works there too. So basically, whether it's the peg or the holes, I can't exceed this green boundary. And this is what they call virtual condition, but that's not really important to learn the terminology yet. But whether it's the hole and the amount that it can shift, or the peg and the amount that it can shift, you take the bullseye that you can commit to, the bullseye that you know you can hit day in and day out making parts, and you can add the peg and the bullseye to get the zone that it can't exceed. And you take that same zone and apply it to the holes. And you can just add the bullseye size and you get the size of your hole. Now, I'm only talking about one feature right here, but position really matters when we go to two holes. If I were only dealing with one peg and one hole, position wouldn't really matter. It's all about size. And it slips in and out of there pretty easily.
it doesn't take anything because there's no position requirement. It's all about size. It's when I have two of them a fixed distance apart that location becomes critical and see it's even harder to put together even though the pegs are the same size. So let's see what that looks like. If I've got the two pegs I've put down bullseyes that are an exact distance apart that have defined where my peg can go, the maximum extents of where that peg can land and still be a good part on both pegs. And I have to do the same thing with the holes. And basically what I've done is you look at that, this is the same bullseye that I've committed to on my part with the holes in it. And when I'm lined up on this edge of the bullseye, I get that circle. When I'm all the way on this edge of the bullseye, I get that circle. Up at the top, I get that circle. And down at the bottom, I get this circle. So that's the maximum extreme that I can move this hole. But now we see that every time I move this hole relative to a fixed peg, I'm essentially making that hole smaller. Does that make sense? It's on both of these. So we're on the peg, moving it around made it bigger, enlarged the zone that I had to fit into. The hole when it shifts from one side to the other, makes that zone smaller. And so, to make sure that when we drill our holes, they will always be able to line up and fit together, I've got to make sure that the worst case of the pegs will always fit inside those holes. And of course I have to target the same distance apart from each other. But this way, no matter where that peg lands, as long as it's centered somewhere in my bullseye on either one of these, it will always fit in the worst case hole as long as it is centered on its bullseye. So this is all about position tolerance. And there are a couple of little details I left out, but we can cover those in another video. The important thing is that you understand that it's not just about size, it's about position whenever we're putting a feature like this together that has two features that have to fit. And if you can understand this concept, then all the other details will make a whole lot more sense.